Air-cooled beetles have this really distinctive little chirping noise, and they pretty much all have it, at least from the factory. Now we're going to find out exactly what makes that chirping noise chirp. Michael, show what we're talking about. That sound, that very specific sound, is all because of this. It's the chrome exhaust tips that come on our 71 Super Beetle. Now the guys at Painters Grinding explained all about why it is that these exhaust tips make such a specific noise. Volkswagen, I don't think they intended to have that sound. But when you hear it, you know damn well it's 100%, a vo Volkswagen. It's always a Volkswagen. It's always a Type 1 or a Type 2, but just a series of baffles in here and the way the air passes through it, it's very neat. And do you know how much these cost? They're very cheap. They're not very much at all. I think they're like 12 bucks a piece. No so way. Nothing. Yeah. As you can see, our current ones are real crusty, so we got to play with our tips today and put on these new shiny chrome ones. Given the fact that these tips have probably been on here for 47 plus years, we're going to soak them in a penetrating fluid to give us a good shot of removing the clamps that hold them on because they are going to be tight to get off. While we let the exhaust soak in WD-40, let's take a look at our next big upgrade. The radio in our 71 Superbug is a terrible, low quality, cheap Walmart special head unit. Mike, show them what we're talking about. This is the so-called Walmart special that is in here currently. Uh, so it looks bad, it looks out of place, it's not period correct, but worst of all, it doesn't actually do anything anyways, and it kind of just falls out if you pull on it enough. So this has got to go, we're going to take it out. All right, so to get to the radio, we're going to have to pull back a lot of this actually very good condition cardboard paneling, and then pull out some of the so-called rat's nest of wires back there in the airbox to get to the radio. Please note, we are not paid professionals, nor are we mechanics. We're just a couple of guys trying to have some fun and learning how to wrench on this little Volkswagen. So this is the fresh air box that we're trying to pull out. I'm gonna unclip it here. Some wires going to it from the interior. Maybe best just to scoot this kind of out of the way so we can get to the radio. Which looks like a mess, as always, on a Volkswagen. So how these work is there's a faceplate and then there's this little bit of trim that carves it all up. But how the radio works is it's actually pretty clever. There's these little tabs um, on either side that hold it in to its mounting cradle and there's a special tool you put in there to release these little pressure points but we don't have the special tool so we're using zip ties and actually we got it to budge which is pretty cool so now it should, should just pull out but of course it's all hooked up in the back all right so we've uh, gotten rid of this plastic trim piece that kind of surrounds the main bracket and then had to do a little bit of bending to these little tabs in here but the bracket itself for the old radio is now out this is a upgraded radio we bought off J-Bugs. It was like 180 bucks, um, but it brings the Volkswagen into the 21st century with auxiliary inputs and FM, AM compatibility. So we actually have some modern tech, but it still looks pretty old school. So we're gonna try to make this fit in our little Volkswagen. So first off, let's see what's in the box. Okay, here we go. Ta-da! There she is. Ooh, snazzy. Let's pull it out of this little plastic wrap here. Here we go. Ooh, fancy. Custom auto sound. So, I think this is a removable faceplate. We just unscrew some stuff to, to take this out, and it looks pretty vintage, which is really cool. We even have some knobs. For the uh, the volume and the tune. Okay, so we've got this back plate here that'll keep the radio against the firewall. Yeah, you're there, Tommy. Yep, go ahead. Good. That's both good. Of them? Yep, both of them. So there's that back plate on the far side, right? And then what we've got to do is take the front trim pieces, which are down here, and using the series of bolts and washers that they gave us, we'll essentially just push this through, line it up with the trim, 
and then it should be all dandy. So basically the way this system works, it allows you to just adjust how, uh, how far in or out you want the radio to be once it's in the dash. So we want it to stick out a little bit, but we don't want the knobs to be too far away from the dashboard. Unfortunately, in order to fit the old radio into the dashboard, someone did a really bad job hacking through the firewall, leaving this crooked and uneven mess of a rectangle in which to put the radio through. If this hadn't been done, this whole job would have been a little bit easier. However, it was still pretty straightforward as we had enough material to clamp down to. Good. Sweet. Okay, hold that right there. Don't move. Washer. Ah, be careful, Michael. Other washer. Hiya. And the final nut. Hopefully I don't push anything out of place. All right, so the head unit is now fit into place. Bam, looks good. So our radio comes with this little pigtail set of wires which you can plug into the back. And it should be fairly simple. We've got our ground. Um, we've got our constant hot battery. We've got our ignition. And then we have this little blue one, which is for an auto antenna, which is a device that we're not playing with. So this shouldn't be too bad. We also have a separate pigtail right here, which goes to all of our speakers. So we've got front left, front right, rear right, rear left. We have um, bass. We have all sorts of goodies. And, and we're not really going to be using um, any of these except for the one speaker in our dashboard. So get right to work. This old radio had a lot of other goodies, including this HD radio tuner box. Um, we're not going to be using any of this junk. We just want a basic sound system. So, we get rid of these zip ties. We can take a look, see what we got going on. So someone has spliced in all this extra wire, which we don't need. Why wouldn't they use the same color wire? That would make our lives way too easy. To way too easy. So I've been poking around our rat's nest with a circuit tester for a while. I found a wire that should be constant hot which means it should be taking voltage straight from the battery, but it ain't doing anything. It's time to check the fuses. And, sure enough, that is totally blown. So that's our culprit. Okay, putting the new fuse in. And there it is, new fuse in. With the new fuse in, we should see some light on our circuit tester. There it goes. We've got constant power from the battery now. After finding and tracking down each wire I needed to make the radio work, I found it super helpful to label them with just a little bit of masking tape and a sharpie. Then it was time to attach new bullet connectors and wire it all up. Okay, Michael, we have it all wired up, but we're missing some knobs. We gotta twist some knobs, Tommy. Twist some knobs. All right, so there's a little mini knob piece that goes on. There's our knob, dude. Okay, now let's do our volume knob. Volume. We got we got knobbage, Tommy. So okay, this... Michael, turn the key. Woo! This is exciting. Mission. Whoa! Oh, it works. Turn up the volume. Not all the way. Oh, one speaker. Oh, right here. And then this is the tune function, I imagine. Oh, it does that. So we've got a digital LCD display. Display, obviously, we have uh, presets and then volume. And we have an auxiliary port too, which we have to wire up somehow. But I that'll be another day. That'll be another episode. We got one more thing to pull off here, Tommy. Oh yeah. Is oh, wait, did you already take protector? that off? Ooh. Ooh. Oh. And it's in. Job done. Nicely done. So we've let the uh, pipes here soak in a bit of WD-40 to loosen everything up. I've got a 10 millimeter socket. I'm gonna try and uh, take off the old exhaust pipes. Oh. All right. Nut number one is off. Let's do the other one. Oh yeah, here we go. Very nice, I like. We talked to several Volkswagen experts on how to remove these exhaust tips and they all pretty much said the same thing. Lubrication and brute force. The first one came out easily. Hey, Tommy, this is coming out. Come on, ho, ho. One pipe. One really gross, disgusting exhaust pipe is out. However, the second one, Okay, time to do the next one. Wasn't quite as easy. And now with some liquid motivation, this should eventually come out too. Ah, come on, tip. But it's harder than it looks. This tip is in there. This one isn't twisting like the last one did. Come on. Did you try squirting more in there? I did. Quite a bit. 
Tip's not coming out, Tommy. All right, well, that's like loose, but it's not coming out. <laughs> so close! <laughs> no. So our old rusty pipes are off, and before we put the new ones on, let's see if our Volkswagen still makes that Jetsons chirp that they're so known for, or if that has gone away. Okay, Michael, let's hear it. Dude, what the heck? It sounds so different. That's crazy. It's loud. It sounds like a like a Subaru, like a boxer. Yeah, but the mufflers are still on, right? The mufflers are on. It just doesn't have the the little chirpy sound. Yeah. So without the tips, it sounds completely different. It's much more aggressive. It's kind of cool, actually. But I think we should put the new tips back on. Absolutely. Anyways. Yeah. What? Almost sounds like a little German Harley. Kind of, like, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like that. Really, blah, 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 blah. It's really throaty. <laughs> but we got to put the tips back on, though. Let's put on some new tips. Felix sounds too angry. Yeah, he sounds a little mean. <laughs> now you're supposed to use a rubber mallet to bang the new pipes in so they fit properly. We of course don't have that, so we're going to use this nice fat pamphlet and a hammer because we have the wrong tools. I think you're the first person to ever hit a Bentley Bentayga with a hammer, Tommy. Now I guess the trick here is just making sure we line it up with the other one, right? Yeah. Hey! It's okay, okay, slow. Okay, the right one's out about five inches after we pulled it out just a little from its end stop, and that's about five inches as well. We're good? Yeah, we're good. Nice, let's clamp them down and then uh, start it up again. So new tips are installed. Michael, start her up. Okay, so this is our old gas cap and it's leaking badly. Yeah, you can see it's got these horrible cracks in the gasket. The gasket itself is just completely shot. But fortunately, we've got this brand new shiny one. Uh, so let's put that on. One click. All right, that's on there. So <laughs> hopefully it won't smell horribly of fuel when you turn to the left a little too hard. Michael, so we put the radio in, put the new exhaust tips on. I still have to clean up under the hood, make it all safe and finalize. Yeah, but we fixed two big problems today and we got a new gas cap on there. I'd call it a successful day. I feel like a proper car dude. Yeah, we did actually some wrenching today. I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to be commenting, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, but nobody died. Nobody died and everything is on there and everything works. So I'm going to chalk that up as a big success. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of TFL Now's Beetle Diaries. We'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.